Hi, I'm George and welcome to The Cellar Door. I'm back in the beautiful Riverland in South Australia where a little later on I'll be visiting local epic winery, Selina Estate. But first I'm off to the Coonawarra to see Catnook. Let's go. So Chris, this is your domain. This is your kingdom. Yes, yeah. Yep, it is. great. Uh, tell us about these vines that we're walking through. These vines are Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. They've started growing a bit in the last month. We grow up for use in sparkling wine. Delightful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've got all the little baby grapes coming yes, out. Yeah, exactly. So six leaves, a couple of bunches, can just see all the little flowers, mm -hmm. those little round balls. Yep. They're going to be flowers and then in another month or so they'll open up and then they'll get pollinated and we'll have grapes. And you'll have Pinot Noir grapes and you've got, I mean, you've got so many different grapes here at Catnook. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a whole, about 60% Cabernet Sauvignon, mm -hmm. followed by Shiraz and then Chardonnay, Merlot, all, all the mainstream stream sort of varieties. Yep. That we've got here. But you're dabbling in some some different yeah, ones now? Exactly, we've got a little wee bit of Malbec, which yep. we've planted in 2013. Which I've heard is looking pretty good. Yes. Yeah? Yeah, I'm quite chuffed about that. Yeah. And so second or third vintage of that, getting bottled about now. Excellent. And then coming on stream will be some Tempranillo and some Sangiovese, which will either stand on their own right, you know, single variety all in a bottle or we'll blend it with Cabernet Sauvignon and or, and or Shiraz. Mm -hmm. Do you work very closely with Tim during vintage or you oh, sort yeah. of yeah. send yeah. your children off to be bottled? Or? I, yeah well yeah, there's a lot of trust there isn't there? Yeah. Um, yeah we do work closely. Yeah. Mm. Tim's just been, been here uh, vintage so far mm -hmm. and we're working hand in hand and, which was great. Lot, the communication has to be mm. very tight and and regular and, and good, mm -hmm. which, which it has been. Oh, it's good. And you've been here at Catnook for? Since 2000, so 19 years. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. It's quite a while. It is, yeah it is actually. It's longer than we thought we'd be here. My wife and I came from New Zealand. Uh -huh. Thought we'll do this on our way somewhere else. And, and here you here. are. Yeah, exactly. So you obviously enjoy the Kunawara very much. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice community, it's beautiful place to grow grapes it's very satisfying mm. and I'm a horticulturalist by background and it's just such a good place to grow things. Yeah and in terms of growing things it's got a very unique soil. Oh yeah mm. that's this um, red terra rossa mm -hmm. which is say a, a clay loam it's quite weird it's very very shallow but it sustains all this wonderful growth these wonderful vines and it, and it holds the structure so so well so for example here these vines have been here 30, 40 years and there's been very little nurturing of the soil really. Mm -hmm. While we can dig a hole and still see that it's held this wonderful structure so it, which means that it drains really easily, it, the air gets in there and so the roots can breathe. Oh, and sure. it, it, which is quite incredible that it can do this after such a period of time. So John had all of this land, Yes. but Catnook is special to yeah, him? Well, Catnock was one of the areas that he isolated that, and he built the, his office building here which is where our cellar door sales building is mm -hmm. now and the front of that was his office mm -hmm. and the name Catnock came was an Aboriginal or is an Aboriginal name meaning fat land or productive land. Fat land. Yeah so Beautiful. again well before William Morris it's very well recognised as being a very productive area. We, we can grow anything. Mm. Just 
Well, I would like to taste the fat of the land, so let's Why not? pop to the cellar door. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So Naomi, the Coonawarra is a region steeped in history and Catnook is the oldest functioning winery in the area. That's correct George, so um, it is, yeah, we're very blessed here at Catnook. Um, John Riddock, so the founder of Coonawarra, back in 1867, um, he purchased the land here and um, our cellar, which is now our cellar door, was his original um, office workspace. So and that's where we are right now. Yeah. So we're sitting in what would have been his office. It, the office of the founder of the Coonawarra. That's correct. That's yeah. pretty good stuff. It is very It's looking very. in very good condition for such an old building. Yeah, it wasn't always the case, George, I'll be honest with you. Um, so for many, many years, this building was very run down, as was um, adjacent to this building, the um, historic stables, which is actually one of the oldest buildings in the region. For a sit down dinner, um, it can host approximately 40 people. So it's a really lovely, small, intimate venue. So the stables, you host a lot of functions, we including do. I mean, yeah. weddings, obviously, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, no, we do. And also um, private dinners. For people that are looking for a nice intimate um, dinner party situation, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Then we've got next door, which used to be our cellar door, the homestead, which was um, where John Riddock's son, Jack, lived before he then ventured on to Melbourne. So for many, many years, this was used as a storage um, space. Um, and approximately 12 years ago, um, Catnock applied for and received a $50,000 grant from the South Australian Tourism Commission to help with the beautiful restoration of the building. So we're very lucky um, for the last 10 years that this has been our cellar door. It's a gorgeous space. Yeah. So you've got your sort of cellar door tasting area mm -hmm. and then you've got a little private room. Exactly. So. Um, we're really blessed in Coonawarra. The fact that we don't get all the day trippers um, from the capital cities means that we um, can offer a very one-on-one -on -one, um, tasting experience. So we like to use this little sitting room um, for private tastings. Um, so if anyone comes to Catnook and that's something that they wanted to experience, please just get in touch with us and yeah. And then like you get the one-on-one -on -one yeah. service, yep. which I mean. A beautiful platter. Incredible. Yeah. This looks so delicious and it's all locally Yep, everything's made. Um, locally sourced. Um, we like to support local businesses. Um, so our cheeses are sourced from Limestone Coast Cheese, which are based in Lucendale, the very famous Coonawarra store. So if you come to Coonawarra, everyone goes to the Coonawarra store <laughs> at one stage. So yeah, and um, we also have our beautiful grounds outside. Um, which I guess um, over obviously in the summer months we offer picnic rugs and everyone can go and sit outside and um, enjoy some sunshine and some beautiful wines and cheese. That sounds so lovely. Yeah. So you have been at Catnook for a while? Yes, I have, yep, mm -hmm. for more than 10 years now, yeah. So um, I love it. I get to experience people from all over the country um, and also many um, international visitors. So to be able to offer such a beautiful tasting experience is very um, rewarding. Yep. So you've got it all covered. Really. Yeah, we, we hope that people come here and um, spend an hour with us and um, go through our beautiful range of wines. Mm -hmm. It's a pioneering sort of in the blood here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm going to wander out and immerse myself in this beautiful place. But first, I'm going to sample his delicious local cheeses. Yep. Enjoy. <laughs> So Tim, you are the senior winemaker at Catnook Estate. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we're in the wool shed here, mm -hmm. which is a really special part of our, our winery or estate. And this was the, essentially the first place that wine was made in the Coonawarra region. Uh, we've got these little open top fermenters here, which we ferment our Prodigy and Odyssey in. And uh, So do you have to climb up to like, yeah, we've got a machine where we can get in there and have a look at the top and manage the caps. We gravity feed these days the fruit in there so we're not crushing the berries up okay. or damaging them before we start the fermentation process. Mm -hmm. And that, the guts of that really means that we can really accurately manage extraction and have a really fine tannin profile coming out of the fermenter. Excellent. And so is this, this looks like a very large 
spot for tasting. I'm assuming. Yes, that's no, that, that, you, you might <laughs> just... drown if you try and taste over <laughs> yeah. there. Um, but they, these valves, they're, they're really just ways that we can drain the tank off um, sure. before pressing. Um, we manually and in a very hands-on way dig dig the skins out after we've drained. Oh. So we've got a, a door here, oh. we'll get in there and scratch the tank out and, and then put it into a little bin. And that's where this really cool piece of equipment comes into play, yep. which is awesome. Again, pretty old school in terms of philosophy, but a, a new school design. So that's a basket press. It's a really slow, gentle pressing. We've got a, a big plunger that comes down through this, this cage here. Mm -hmm and just slowly, slowly, slow, slowly applies pressure to the grapes that we've dug out of the fermenter and um, gently squeezes all of the sort of good tannic juices out of those skins. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a great way to add structure and power to your wines without getting sort of aggression and, and harshness. Excellent. So you've got some modern machinery in here. There's a pretty <laughs> not modern looking item over here. Yeah. And so this is a nod to what this building was? Yeah, not to uh, the building's origin. Mm -hmm. um, so an old wool baling um, or wool press mm -hmm. for, for baling up the wool that would have been shorn in here back in the day. And uh, Was this whole building a wool shed? Yeah, this, this whole structure here was, its primary function was for sheep shearing. So yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's great. And you've got more yeah, more, more through this way. Mm. Yep, Shall barrel we? roll and um, some interesting things to see. Mm. Cool, let's go for a wander. Yes, let's. Whilst filming the Celador in the renowned Coonawarra wine region, our crew chose to stay at the Hollick Estate's wonderful Hollick House. Located on the footsteps of Hollick Estate's winery, this modern and comfortable getaway provides a relaxing respite no matter the time of year. A few minutes drive from Panola and right next door to Hollick Estate's mouth-watering cellar door and restaurant. Hollick House is a great place to spend time with friends and family. To book your stay at Hollick House, head to hollick.com. So Tim, we're in the barrel hall. Yeah, this is where we mature all the uh, red wines mm -hmm. um, that are Asian oak. So we've got a, a mixture of varieties in here, uh, different ages. So this, this is a fun room to be in and sort of disappear with a with a barrel thief in the glass for a, a while. A and barrel have a, thief. Have a look around. Yeah. So this does what it says. It steals wine out of barrels exactly. So this is how you keep tabs on what's going on inside the yeah. barrel. Yeah. Yeah, it's really important. Um, You've got all these little vessels that are holding wine in here mm -hmm. and making sure you know what's going on all the time, yep. uh, which involves lots of tasting, which is... Um, it's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. That's horrible. Someone has to do it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's good fun. So you have been a winemaker for quite a while? Yeah, for a while now. Um, I suppose I've done, if I count, I think see the 24, 25 vintages, but that's over that's a about... Little while. 20 years, so or 19 years, or something like that. But um, worked in the Barossa region, a um, bit of time in France, 14 years in New Zealand, mm -hmm. um, here, which is fantastic. A um, little bit of time with a side project in India, which was really fascinating oh, as cool. well. Um, but what I've really enjoyed is just the opportunity to travel widely. I've just realised I like making things. Mm -hmm and winemaking gives you the chance to sort of make this thing that keeps living and changing the whole way, the whole way through its life, way into its bottle residence. And that for me is beautiful. So there's some magic happening in these barrels that's going to find their way into bottles? Yeah, yeah, so we've got all of our wines in here. We make a, a series of wines here at Catnook Estate. We've got the uh, limited release wines, mm -hmm. which encompass the Odyssey and Prodigy. Sure and two other wines which I find really interesting. Um, a wine called the um, Amara Cabernet, which is a single single block Cabernet that we make. And that's the oldest block, isn't it? Uh, yeah, one of, mm. yeah. And just beautiful, elegant, elegant aromatic Cabernet, absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Then we've got a wine called the Caledonian in the limited release range, which is a, an Australian, very Australian blend. So it's a Cabernet Shiraz, mm -hmm. a lovely wine. 
Then we have the, the Catnock Estate range, which for me is very much the story of the site that we farm. So it's fruit led, it's elegant, polished, and, and, and that's the guts of ultimately what I think tells the best story of, of who we are. Mm. Um, it's an amazing story, that yeah. history and that sort of forward movement. Yeah, it's good. Let's go cool. further afield. Let's look in these barrels. All right, let's do that. Mm. I'm cool. going to bring this little bring the thief. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, we've got our little thiever ready to go. Yes, we've got the thief here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a quick look at some wine from 2019, vintage that's just gone past. Mm -hmm. So this is some Shiraz. And one of the new things that we're, we've been doing here just recently is inclusion of whole bunches in some of the ferments. Oh, cool. Yeah. Which, so unpressed, you just pick them off the vine and they yeah, go in? Yeah, and throw them into the fermenter. And um, it, it's, yeah, it's an interesting sort of way to, to add some amazing fruity accents into wine. So you get this incredible lift and bouquet. The fermentation is actually done within, within the grapes as a whole grape rather than oh. under the action of yeast. So it, it's a whole different sort of thing going on yeah, there. Wow that gives you this world of explosive, bright, lifted flavours. The colour is it's, incredible. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's like super blue. It just my nails. It does. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly got a lot of fruit happening. Yeah, it's really fragrant and perfumed, mm. a mixture of um, like red roses and um, bright sort of red and blue fruits. It's mm -hmm. not a classic sort of big, black, dark, heavy Shiraz. Yeah. Some of these techniques that we're employing at the moment, I think are, are really exciting for the future here. And um, they're just like bright, juicy, exciting, and, and mm. I think um, ultimately gonna help make Delicious even better wine. wine. yeah. Mm. Mm. It's good. So it's quite savory still. It is, yep. The nose, Despite the, the nose yeah. seems so fruity, mm. but the tannin structure is actually quite sinewy and, mm. and really well structured. Mm -hmm. So this needs a bit of time in barrel. Uh, we've got time, there's no rush, um, but these are going to turn out really well, I'm sure. So, yes. Shall we sample some more? Absolutely. Let's That's go for another cool. walk. Yeah. Okay, Tim, here we are. Let's get stuck into the wines we've yeah. been talking about. Yeah, so this is the 18 vintage. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, Coonawarra Riesling is very much, um, it's very elegant Riesling. It's very sort of floral and perfumed. Mm -hmm. Has a nice tight um, acid framework. You can smell that. Yeah, no, it's quite. kind of bouquet from here. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Delicious. Yeah, lots of citrus perfume. Uh, lemons and limes, some ripe stone fruit. Mm. This is all cool fermented in stainless and then we use about, depends on each year and how the, the vintage is sort of playing out, some lee stirring in the tank oh, to sure. build a bit of texture and, and flesh into the palate. Mm -hmm. It's got kind of a minerally burst. Yeah, yeah, lots of really fresh mineral acidity, mm. which for me is key in good Riesling. If you don't have acid in Riesling, it, it just loses all of its focus and just lacks energy, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of bursts out. It's delicious. Yeah, yum. Tell me about the Odyssey. So the Odyssey is a really interesting wine. It's really a distillation of the, the essence of what the best of the Kunawara is. Mm -hmm. It has a long residence time in barrel. This can be up to three, three and a half years. Is that where barrel. the name comes from? Um, it does feel like a bit of an odyssey sometimes <laughs> when you're making it, yeah. it to go on for quite a while. Yeah. But during that, that long residence time in barrel, it tends to concentrate out, savoury up and, and soften right out too. Mm -hmm. It's our older, more mature vines that, that grow a very concentrated crop. And um, to have a wine in barrel for that long, you do need to have a lot of concentrated fruit power. So let's have a taste of that. Yes, it's a 2014 delicious. vintage. Delightful. 
And this wine was first made by um, Wayne Stebbins, um, a bit of a trial wine in 1990. Mm -hmm. And then first- Was this a secret? It was a bit of a, a secret wine out the back that he didn't <laughs> want to talk about to his boss, probably the cost of goods was too high and he was going to get in trouble. It paid off. Yeah, it did, exactly. Mm. So the, the first commercial vintage was 91, released in 96. Mm -hmm. And um, a really, I think, unique expression Ooh. of Coonawarra Cabernet. It's like a velvety blanket. Isn't it? Mm. It's fresh at the same time as being very complex and, and savoury. A velvety blanket that's just been dry cleaned. There's a lot of power mm. in that wine, a lot of density of fruit, but it comes across in a, a really silky, mm. um, silky kind of integrated It's the um, gentleman. Way. It is. The Cabernet. Yeah, it's beautiful. Lovely wine. So delicious. Tim, thank you so much for having me. I've had such a wonderful time here at Catnook. Absolute pleasure. It's great to have you down here and share what we're, we're up to in the winery. So mm. come back again anytime. I shall. Thank you. So, Bob, this yeah. is your your kingdom. Yes, our little... Uh a little baby, I suppose. No, it's a pretty big baby yeah. now, but yeah. it wasn't always so big, was it? No, no, it was, um, well, this was started from scratch. There was nothing here when we started this, planted this up, well, it was like 23, 24 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we've, yeah, slowly grown up from nothing to some To what two, it is. Yeah, to what it is, some 200 odd, odd hectares yeah. now, the vineyards. Um, do you want to tell me how it first started, what it was like in the beginning? Well, it all started two or three years before this, back in 95. I wanted to make some homemade wine and, mm -hmm. uh, I had a family friend who was an ex-winemaker, so we used to do it before that, but usually you know, wines weren't, uh, didn't weren't come out that good. Yeah. You know, the old homemade Italians used to make that. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I got a friend to help me out. We made a barrel and that came up really nice. And um, and from there, it sort of, uh, we drank all that in one year. It was only 300 <laughs> litres, it was drinkable. And uh, the next year, in 96, we made three barrels of wine. and They gave us about 900 litres and uh, we managed to get through that with some friends. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> And then '97, we went to um, we produced 30 barrels, and that sort of that sort of overloaded a bit. We that thought, was we, too we, much. It was a bit too much, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then we decided whether we get serious or get out, and so, um, and then we started. Then we thought, oh, we'll give it a go. And then '98, um, I think the first vintage crush was um, we crushed 300 ton mm -hmm. of fruit. That's, and that's quite a step up from yeah. 300 liters. So, yeah, 300 <laughs> liters. And, and now we do about yeah, we go from 300 ton to around 15,000 tons, and uh, look, looking to grow a bit more and uh, get to around about 25,000 in the next four or five years. Selena of Selena Estate, and named after you, I believe. Yes, mm. that is, that's me, yeah, <laughs> the, uh, the namesake. That must be pretty exciting for you, to have watched Selena Estate sort of grow and grow and grow and... Yeah, well, I mean, I feel pretty special, mm. even if my parents tell me not to. <laughs> um, yeah, I love that it's named after me. I feel a real connection to it and having watched it grow from nothing to what it is now, mm. I'm really proud of my name obviously but I'm also really <laughs> proud of my parents and what they've done and what they've achieved over the last 21 years. Mm. And you went away for a little bit and now you've come back and you're working here? Yep so I used to help out when I was young um, on the bottling line over summer holidays I've got scars and bruises galore from that <laughs> then I went off to Adelaide I was there 15 years for school and study and I've recently come back this year to be part of the Riverland side of the winery mm -hmm. um, and get all of the restaurant and new cellar door set up and running. Yeah, which is a mammoth undertaking. It's huge. Mm. We've never done anything like this before, so we are definitely in the deep end. Yep. Um, but we're really happy with how it's turned out so far. And it's been, you've been very involved in a lot of the elements of the restructuring or the, the growth. Yeah, I mean, a lot of our creative discussions happen over the dinner table, mm -hmm. so it's very informally done. So. In that regard, I have become very involved. You know, mm -hmm. They'll start talking about it over dinner and all of a sudden we have all these great new ideas and I'm messaging myself from the table <laughs> trying to remember everything that we've covered. So I can tell Dad in the morning that, yeah, let's do X, Y and Z because yeah. that was a great idea. Yeah. Uh, and the decor inside the cellar door, 
is yours and your yes. mum's? Yes, definitely me and mum. Yep. Dad wanted something slightly more rustic. So we've tried to bring in those elements um, with the wood elements of the table and the corrugated iron um, on the roof as well. And the stone. And all the, the stonework, mm. yes. All beautiful. that beautiful natural stonework that we handpicked. And then mum and I have come in and sort of dazzled it a little bit <laughs> with, you know, the bronze and the gold chairs um, and that sort of copper feel mm -hmm. um, that we've got up on the bar and below as well. <laughs> so something, trying to mix the um, traditional with the modern, which is, which sort of encompasses Selena Estate very well. Yeah, that's the philosophy. Exactly, mm. yeah. So Selena Estate started out very small <laughs> and now it's huge uh, and you've got quite a few different wines in your portfolio. Yes, we do. So we have almost 90 SKUs, so individual wines and brands mm -hmm. um, and varieties that go all over the world or different global markets. So we'll design something specifically for China, for the UK, for the US, for Sweden, mm. um, for all of that. So we don't have everything here, but we do produce quite a lot um, behind us. So just some of the uh, SKUs that we have available mm. here at the winery. We're walking through an organic vineyard at the moment. Yes, we want to sort of, I think one of the first to set up organic vineyards here in the Riverland and we've got over half our vineyards, some over 100 hectares is, they've been certified organic, uh, Shiraz and Cabernet mm -hmm. for the last, uh, oh, it's close on 15 years now that we've been organic. Mm -hmm. this, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, and your portfolio is pretty broad. So you've got your organic wines. We've got our organic clients, yeah. We mm -hmm. do a lot overseas with, with organic wines mm -hmm. and uh, the domestic market's now starting to um, pick, up on the... pick up on the organics as well, starting to, there's more demand mm -hmm. showing for that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's a... So you guys, are, you're innovators? Well, we probably were there at the start, yeah. yeah. Well, especially with organics and something uh, and trying to do something different. And, mm. um, and yeah, it's, it's taken a while, but uh, yeah, Here we it's, are. It's, it's coming together. And you've also got um, at your cellar door, you have a restaurant as well now. Yes, now we decide with a new cellar door, we have a lot of overseas clients and um, even uh, domestic clients are starting to increase as well. And more visitors are, are coming to the Riverland. So, because uh, it, it is a nice place up here. Just yeah, to, it's it's, I think it's just a, a hidden little- An unsung uh, hero. Unsung hero, it is, yes. And you're helping put it on the map. We're trying to do our little bit for it as well, yeah. yes. So we've decided we'll, we've new cellar door and uh, oh, we'll, we'll put a restaurant in there we'll, and an Italian restaurant as well in there. So. Mm -hmm. um, just for something Delicious. different. Delicious, yeah. yeah. Buongiorno Vincenzo. Buongiorno. How is that? Is that okay? Good. Great, okay. Uh, so you're the head chef at Selena yes. Estate and you helped, you've sort of been here since the beginning. You designed the menu. Yes. Yeah. How did you come to join Selena Estate? I believe you had a food truck? I have a, I had a, a food truck. I have a food truck, mm -hmm. so. I met uh, Selena State because they contact me to do a function. Mm -hmm. So I went here to do a function. They like my food. I prepared for them a lasagna and antipasto. Mm -hmm. and then they say they have a plan to do a restaurant, Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. So they say, you want to come to help us to do this? Okay, why not? Yeah, great, and here you are. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so yeah. you've got pizzas on the menu, obviously. We have pizza, and we have, uh, we have antipasto, pizza, pasta, and mm -hmm. uh, secondi, like second course, uh -huh. like calamari, steak. Uh, it's a very traditional then, Italian. Yes, and then we have contorni, it's like a side dish, mm -hmm. like salad, roast potato, chips. Mm -hmm. Then we have a dessert, all the Italian dessert, oh, yes. Tell panagotta, me about those. Sicilian cannoli. Uh -huh. Yum. Yeah. So it's a very traditional Italian yeah, style. Traditional Italian style, yeah. But you source a lot of the ingredients from the local Yes, area. all the vegetables is from South Australia. Mm -hmm. Some imported from Italy. Uh, we, ah, we do also fresh pasta. We have a machine for do a fresh pasta oh, cool. every day. Mm -hmm fresh, all the fresh kind of pasta, mm -hmm. ravioli, gnocchi. And you hand make those? Uh, gnocchi is all made, ravioli is with the machine. Mm -hmm. We buy a machine to do all the pasta, all kind of pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've got a team working with you? Yes, mm -hmm. we have uh, another head chef, sous chef. And we have, is he uh, the head chef or the sous chef? Uh, <laughs> I think you're gonna you're gonna fight it out. Maybe later. maybe we are at the same level. Okay. She's Australian. Oh cool. Uh, I'm Italian. Mm -hmm. Maybe we do a fusion of the dishes. Perfect. 
Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very Selena estate to have that yes. Italian and Australian yes. Yes. in equal levels. Yeah. Whilst filming the cellar door in the magnificent Riverland wine region in South Australia, our crew chose to stay at Pike River's luxury eco villas. Located on the banks of the beautiful Pike River with views over the majestic Murray and Pike Rivers, Pike Rivers Villas provide the perfect base to explore the region whilst rediscovering the meaning of relaxation. Their eco-friendly villas cater for romantic getaways for two or larger groups of family and friends. Either way, you'll enjoy the sun setting over one of Australia's most inspiring views. To book your stay at Pike River Villas, head to pikeriver.com.au. So this is a big operation, but you are still involved in the winemaking? Yes, we're still we're still involved in that, we, although we've got a couple other winemakers on board, mm. but uh, yeah, I, I have a, an input in that and, and final decision on uh, uh, wine allocations as well, so... Mm -hmm. uh, do you yeah. have a pet variety or...? Well, we do some alternative varieties as well, you know, apart from the organics, we, we, we do some uh, you know, Italian varieties like uh, Monte Pulciano, oh, yeah. uh, Bianca Alessano is a white variety and uh, we're sort of getting into that a little bit, mm -hmm. especially for the uh, restaurant trade and that sort of seems to be quite uh, receptive to that to those like sort a of popular alternative varieties. Yeah. food wine yeah mm -hmm. my favorite variety still is probably Cabernet Sauvignon ah yes I mean they, they call it the prince of wines and uh, you I agree don't, I, I tend to agree yeah we sort of keep going back to that in the end mm -hmm. but uh, uh, and it's a, quite a family like, yeah. run operation yeah, we started, yeah my, my wife and I started it and uh, yeah it's grown on and now that um, Selena's coming into it, uh, into the business. It's great. So it's a reason to to keep going now. Yeah. So I've just basically gone from yeah from doing. I'm just about. Uh, I don't know if I'm the caretaker now at my <laughs> age. Uh, You're the face. I'll yeah, still be around for a few more years. But, uh, <laughs> Wandering the vines. Yeah. yeah, yeah and this really. is just a nice time of the year to be able to even walk through vineyards now as the bunches are starting to develop. Mm, it's looking very lush. Yeah, and the yes, and the vineyards like in October they are, they are very very lush and beautiful at mm -hmm. this stage at that length. They're sort of another week or two and they'd be even even more, more impressive to, to look at. To the, yeah. Do you get much time to come out and wander between the vines these oh, days? Oh, we still, still get out there, still get out the vines and that. Yeah. And so early in the morning sometimes you've got to go for a walk, try and, try and keep a bit fit. So uh, <laughs> I, walk, I walk around instead of a drive around the vineyards. Ah, yes. Well, Bob, I'm going to head in and check out your cellar door. Maybe okay, taste yeah. some more of your wine. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, they'll have got something for you to taste that's uh, quite, quite impressive. Yeah, I bet. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. So is there a wine or a label that you helped design? Yes, there is. So this is my silhouette label. It's my little baby, I guess. <laughs> um, our graphic designer made in-house and she took my face and then sort of sharpened the image so it does. So that's your face? Yes, it is. So a modified version of um, my face um, with obviously the modern marble look. Mm. Just to create something a little bit different because a lot of our labels are quite traditional as that's what's most popular. Mm -hmm. Is that your favourite wine? It is, yes. This is a Petit Verdot, so it's a French variety. We do quite a lot of alternate varieties here, mm. but this one is beautiful. It's a great food wine. It pairs perfectly um, with a nice hard cheese. And wine and cheese, what could be better than that? I know. <laughs> I got to sample a bit of that before, actually. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sample some of those wines. Absolutely. Let's get mm. started. George, I you to pass us the bubbles. Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> That sound always makes me so happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lovely sound, the sound of a cork popping. It really is, isn't it? So what have we got here? So this is our sparkling Petite Meslier. So this comes from the Adelaide Hills. We buy the grapes from there and then we bring it um, down to us here and it's all made here on site. So Petite Meslier is one of the traditional French varieties that are used to make champagne. Mm -hmm. So that includes Petite Meslier, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are your main three French champagne varieties. So this is made with one of those varieties and also made method traditional, so the way the French make their champagne as well. Mm. So this one you get that beautiful fruit sweetness at the beginning and there's just some subtle complexities at the end. So it's almost, it smells like it's had a touch of oak even though it hasn't, mm -hmm. but what it does instead of giving you that real over, overcompensating oak flavours that people don't really like in their whites, it just gives you an extra layer, an extra complexity to it, which actually goes really nice with that beautiful fruit at the beginning. Mm. Let's, uh, let's sample it. Oh 
Yeah, yum. So it's very dainty. It is. Mm. A sort of peach and apricot mm. or dried apricots, I think. More like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yum. And this is by far the best part about working at the winery. Yes, there is <laughs> this sampling. <laughs> <laughs> I just might have to go back in and have another taste. Well, you should always take two mouthfuls when you taste wine. Mm. So the first one to get rid of any residual flavours you have from what you've eaten or drunk before. Mm -hmm. and the second one to get the taste. Mm. So cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Thank you so much. So let's do the rosé next. Yes, yeah, great. It's a very fun label. It is. So this is a brand new label that we've just launched. We launched it just before we opened um, at the Riverland Wine and Food Festival. Um, Soleil all day, then rosé. <laughs> Something a little bit quirky and fun, as obviously you see in the label, mm. and obviously the beautiful peak colour that it is. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's pour the rosé. Mm. So this is a lovely kind of summery... It is, yes. So heaps of fruit at the beginning. Think strawberries and cream, think sherbet, um, and really rich in those flavours, but not too overpowering um, and not overly sweet, which can be oh, something cool. that's quite associated with rosé. Mm -hmm. Ours is slightly on the drier side. Which is so a modern... It is, yeah, and mm. quite light, despite the quite deep colour that you get there. That's a beautiful colour. And what grapes do you use? So these ones here come from a Pinot Noir grape. Mm. So part of it went to the rosé yeah. and then yep. part of it went to the new sparkling that we have as well, which will be a red sparkling coming up shortly. Oh, yum. Yeah. This has got, yeah, you can, that, it's got a very sort of candy sweetness, but. Yeah, but you actually don't taste the candy sweetness. So it's almost quite deceiving, um, but it's really welcoming and inviting on the nose. Mm. Mm. It has got a very gentle sweetness and then a beautiful dry kind of finish at the end. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's great like that. And it also works really well in a frosé, so that's the slushy. That's what we did with it when we launched Yum. it. And that's amazing for summer and they're always mm. so popular. Will you be doing that at your cellar door? We'll be door? doing it on the weekends here for cellar door over summer. Um, and then in winter we will do a different winter cocktail. This is our Twisted Sticks Organic Shiraz. Oh, cool. So we are one of the largest organic producers in Australia and you would have walked through our awesome organic Shiraz grapes. Or with the vineyards mm. there. That's exactly where this comes from. Oh, cool. So I thought it might be nice to try where you got to walk through yeah. and be part of that. Yeah, excellent. So we have been organic since 2009 and it's a three year process to be organic. And then we have to go through an auditing process every year to make sure that we are still complying with everything. Mm -hmm. So what organic means really is no weedicides, pesticides, genetically modified organisms that go um, onto the vineyard, so mm -hmm. no sprays for that. Mm -hmm. And then the grapes are located a further distance away from the conventional ones to avoid any crossover spray. Mm -hmm. When the wine comes into the winery, there is a complete full cleaning of the winery before it comes in oh, wow. to like, make sure there's no contamination as well. Um, the same with the bottling line through all of the tubes and everything and then it comes out looking As like this. this. So it'll have a very similar um, flavour profile to normal conventional Shiraz, mm -hmm. a slightly shorter shelf life, um, definitely designed to be drunk fresh as opposed to celery. Mm. It's a gentle Shiraz. It is, it's not overpowering because um, we still get quite cool nights here, it does balance it out a little bit. So mm -hmm. you get a lot of red berry fruit, I think raspberries, strawberries um, and cherries mm. at the forefront. Um, you're not going to get heaps of tannins from mm -hmm. the organic. You'll still get all the beautiful um, fruit at the beginning mm. and then you'll still get a um, slightly full rounded finish at the end but it's not going to be overly tannic or anything. Do you age it in barrels? So with organic we don't, mm -hmm. no, so there's no oak use for these ones here. Mm -hmm. It's just all fresh. Oh cool. So this one's a 2016, mm. so it's been in the bottle for a few years, so you can start getting that very slight maturation mm. that you get, um, but that's all natural in the bottle as opposed to putting in oak and forcing that aging, mm. um, which can be done. It's still an option. A lot of people do do that for their organics. We like to keep ours slightly on the fresher side and then we age all of our conventional wines as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, it's still got that sort of savoury oak, but it doesn't last through the back of the palate. Yeah, mm. and because of that, it means it's going to pair really well with food. It's not going to overpower yep. um, any meal that you put in front of it. 
because um, I know some people recommend obviously Shiraz with big steaks. Mm -hmm. I find that sometimes you lose the flavour of the steak. A steak is quite delicate in mm -hmm. itself. So this is a perfect steak pairing as well. Um, or a nice rich ragu, um, which we have on our menu. Yeah, <laughs> yum. Bob's ragu paired with this would be amazing and one of the first things I'm really looking forward to ordering. <laughs> I know, wetting my appetite. <laughs>